Hello dear students and welcome to today's session. In this particular session, we are going to start with our discussion of Act 3, Scene 1 of the play, The Tempest. Now this particular scene takes place outside Prospero's cell. Ferdinand enters carrying a log of wood and Prospero has given this menial task to Ferdinand in order to make sure that he has the genuine qualities to become the husband of his daughter. Miranda, who has fallen in love at first sight with Ferdinand, is extremely sad to see him working so hard. She wishes that lightning should burn up those logs that he was asked to pile. She requests Ferdinand to rest, but Ferdinand wants to remain, remind her that he has to finish the task before the sun sets. Miranda wants to carry the logs in his place so that he can take some rest, but Ferdinand declines the offer. Prospero had ordered Ferdinand to pile up the logs of wood also as a punishment for invading the island. But he is pleased to find the two young people fall in love with each other. This is exactly what he had planned and that was why he had ordered Ariel to lure Ferdinand to his cell. Miranda thinks that Prospero is not present when she is speaking to Ferdinand but as a matter of fact Prospero is actually hidden close by. When Miranda wants to know whether Ferdinand loves her, he swears by heaven and earth that he does. When Miranda hears this, she bursts out in tears. She tells Ferdinand that though she is not worthy of him, she would be his wife if he want her. Ferdinand accepts her offer instantly, much to the pleasure of hidden Prospero. Now, things would become gradually clear to you when we discuss line by line of this scene. So you see, the scene here opens with Ferdinand carrying wood, willing to prove his love for Miranda and when the two are conversing with each other they are completely unaware of the presence of Prospero there. So Prospero is also present there but he is invisible to both Miranda and Ferdinand. So Miranda, he, uh, Ferdinand here says there be some sports are painful and their labor delight in them sets off. Some kinds of baseness are nobly undergo, and most poor matters point to rich ends. Now here Ferdinand has been entrusted with the task of piling up the log of woods and he is not complaining about his labor. So this is quite in contrast to that of Caliban's toil when Caliban in the preceding scenes only used to curse Prospero for giving him all sorts of menial tasks like carrying logs of wood, uh, fetching water, cleaning the dish and uh, cleaning the uh, cell. Yeah. So he always used to complain but here Ferdinand does not complain. In fact, he enjoys his labor. He says, that there are some kind of sports. Here sports refers to the physical labor. 
So speaking to himself, Ferdinand says, there are, there are some type of tasks that are painful, but at the same time, they provide some pleasure to the person doing it. And this pleasure compensates for the hard labor. Some kinds of baseness are nobly undergone and most poor matters point to rich ends. Okay. So there are some humble occupations and these humble occupations are carried out most nobly because these humble tasks aim at giving hum noble results. The point to reach ends means they give aim at noble results. So though some tasks may be very low, very humble, very poor, but they are done nobly because they aim at noble results. And the task which Ferdinand has been asked to do, though it is very mean, it is very humble and low task, it could be as heavy to him as odious. He may hate to do that work. So the humble tasks which he is doing at the present moment, that is carrying those logs of wood, is tedious as well as hateful to him. But the lady for whose sake he is doing that task gives a purpose to the dull tax. He says in this way his labor becomes a pleasure for him. And then he begins to praise Miranda. He says, oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father's crabbed. Crabbed here means bad temper. So he says the lady that is Miranda is ten times more gentle than her father who is a very bad tempered person. He feels that Prospero is indeed made of rudeness and he has been asked to carry thousands of those logs and pile them up against the threat of a severe punishment. And this makes Ferdinand feel that Prospero is made up of rudeness. And he says, my sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work and says such baseness had never like executed. Okay, his sweet mistress, he addresses Miranda as his sweet mistress, his beautiful lady, weeps when she sees him doing that sort of task. She tells him that such hard work had never before been done by anyone so noble as Ferdinand. I forgot. So when Ferdinand is speaking to himself, he almost forgot his work. He has almost forgotten his work and that is the reason why he says, I forgot. But these sweet thoughts do even refresh my labors. So he forgot his work, but the sweet thoughts that occurred in his mind, that uh, her, his sweet thoughts about Miranda, about his mistress, makes his labor very light. Because he feels free from care when doing that particular task. He says, most busy, least when I do it. So, uh, when he is doing that task, he considers himself to be most vis busiest when actually he is least busy. Why? Because he is lost in the thoughts of Miranda. Okay. Then Miranda and Prospero enter. Now Prospero enters at a distance and is unseen. You can see in the image he appears at a distance and he is not seen by both Ferdinand and Miranda. So Miranda really feeling very sad for Ferdinand. She is not able to see Ferdinand doing that sort of menial tasks 
because she considers Ferdinand to be the most beautiful person that she had ever seen, a king, a prince, a heavenly figure. And therefore, she uh, says, Alas, now pray you. Okay. Work not so hard. So she entreats Ferdinand not to work so hard. She prays to Ferdinand not to work so hard. And she wishes that lightning had burnt up those locks which he has been ordered to pile up by his, by her father. So had lightning burnt all those locks, then Ferdinand would have been exempted from that sort of laborious tax. So this is purely romantic in notion. So since she has fallen in love with Ferdinand, she could not see Ferdinand doing such type of hard labor. And she prays, she wishes that the lightning had burned up those locks which he has been ordered to pile up by her father. And she requests Ferdinand to put down the log and take rest. Okay, you can see here Miranda in the image requesting Ferdinand to put down the log. In fact, she takes the log, so takes the log and tries to provide some sort of relief, uh, relaxation to Ferdinand. So he, she requested Ferdinand to put down the log and take some rest. And she says that when this log is burnt, the moisture that comes out from burning would be the tears of sympathy which the log will shed for having made Ferdinand tired. So you see, um, she says that when the log is burnt, it will weep. It will weep means when the log is burnt, when the wood is burnt, the moisture will come out from that wood burning wood and this moisture would be the tears of sympathy of the log that will be shed for having made Ferdinand work so hard and she also says my father is hard at study pray now rest yourself so she tells Ferdinand that her father is busy in his study he would not see Ferdinand taking a short rest so therefore she requested Ferdinand to, re to rest for some time and uh, uh, Prospero will not bother him for the next three hours. Why? Because he is busy in his study. Then Ferdinand, O oh, most dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must try to do. So Ferdinand does not want to request because he has been given the task to pile up all the log of woods before sunset. So he must work till sunset without rest in order to finish the work that has been assigned to him by Prospero. Then Miranda, if you will sit down, I will bear your locks the while. Pray give me that, I will carry it to the pile. So when Ferdinand uh, refused to rest, then Miranda, in order to complete the work in the assigned time, she proposes that instead of Ferdinand, she herself would carry the log. So she says that if Ferdinand takes some rest, she would carry the logs. And she in fact uh, asks Ferdinand to give her that log and she will carry it to the pile. You can see she is asking for that log from Ferdinand that she is going to carry and pile it up. And then Ferdinand however means thinks it to be most inhuman to ask a beautiful lady like Miranda to work. And we know that Ferdinand is not uh, going to allow such a thing to happen. So therefore he refused. He said, no, precious creature, okay. no, my lady, most beautiful lady, I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. So he says that he would rather crack his muscles and break his back than allow her to do such type of menial work while Ferdinand would simply be resting. So that is against his honor. Now what is the charm of this entire conversation is that you see the way both of them are concerned for each other. Okay, it clearly indicates that they are in love. But so far there has been no open declaration of love. Okay. So Miranda then says it would become me as well as it does you and I should do it 
with much more ease, for my good will is to it, and yours it is against. So the tax would be more appropriate for Miranda to do than it is for Ferdinand. Besides, she says that she would be able to do it better because she will be doing it with her all goodwill. Okay. Willingly, she will be doing it for the sake of Ferdinand. While Ferdinand is doing it against his will. So she suspects that Ferdinand is not used, is not accustomed to such type of base tax. So maybe he is unwillingly doing that work. But Miranda would be doing it willingly. And she would be doing it out of her goodwill because she is doing it for the sake of her love. So therefore she says that it would be uh, more appropriate for her to do that task than it is for Ferdinand. Then Prospero in an aside, poor warm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. Prospero is in a way happy. Why? Because he could see his plan being executed, his plan working out. So he addresses poor worm, addressing to Miranda, poor creature, you have caught the infection of love. So Miranda is infected with love. And this visitation, the visit, okay, here it means visit, that is Miranda's coming to see Ferdinand. So Miranda coming to see Ferdinand and their conversation clearly proves that Miranda has fallen in love with Ferdinand. So Miranda, you look very little. Okay, to Ferdinand, she says that he looks very tired. However, Ferdinand, no noble mistress. It is fresh morning with me when you are by at night. So this is again a romantic notion. So he says, no, he is not at all tired. In fact, when Miranda is with him, even the night appears to be as bright as morning to him. So to romantic lovers, anything is possible. So night appears to be like as bright as day to Ferdinand when he is in the company of Miranda. I do beseech you, chiefly that I might set it in my prayers, what is your name? So he requested Miranda to tell him her name because so that why he wants to know the name of Miranda so that he could make use of the name in his prayers so that he could pray for Miranda then Miranda tells Miranda oh my father I have broke your haste to say so so she informs Ferdinand her name and she says oh my father by revealing her name she has violated the instructions of Prospero. So Prospero had instructed, maybe he had instructed Miranda not to tell her name, but by revealing her name to Ferdinand, she has violated the instructions of her father. Then Ferdinand admired Miranda. Okay, admired means Miranda who is regarded with much admiration. Indeed, the top of admiration indeed she is in the summit of all wonder the first admired means regarded with admiration second admi admiration here means wonder so is she according to Ferdinand she is in the summit of all wonder she is at the top of all wonder what what is dearest to the world okay, she is worthy what can be considered to be dearest to the world full many a lady I have eyed with the best regard, and many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. So here Ferdinand discloses to Miranda, frankly reveals before Miranda that he has seen many ladies in his life, and he has seen those ladies with much attention, and many times the melodious voice of these ladies have also attracted his attention. He has been attracted towards them because of their melodious voice. He has felt attracted to them for their virtues. Okay. But 
several virtues means he has been attracted to them for their virtues but never has he been so overcome by love it is only when he met with miranda he is overcome with love so he frankly confesses before miranda that though he had seen many ladies in his life who has hold his attention and towards whom he has been attracted because of their several virtues but he has never been overcome with the affection of love it is only for the sake of miranda he is overcome with that affection of love with so full love a soul but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it to the foil okay so earlier though the ladies were virtuous but he has always found some defect in every lady and he felt that the defect in a woman nullified her good qualities that is the reason why she was never never overcome with love so though the women that she had he had come across in his life were virtuous had melodious voice but they had some defect in them and these defects nullified their good qualities but in the case of miranda it seems that she has the best virtues of all the women and he considers miranda to be perfect peerless are created of every creature's best so miranda is perfect is matchless peerless means matchless and she has been created out of the best features in all other women so therefore uh, he is not able to hold his feelings of love okay indirectly he says that he has been overcome with love for miranda then when ferdinand praises miranda miranda says i do not know one of my sins so here we see that ferdinand compares miranda with other women and he says that he she is defectless she is matchless she is made out of the best qualities in other women but as a matter of fact miranda does not know any other woman nor does she remember any other woman's face because she has uh, she was very young when she was brought to that island so she could not recall in the abyss of time any woman she had seen so she has not known any other woman nor does she remember any other woman's face nor have i seen more that i may call men than me so she has only seen her own face in the mirror and she had not seen any other man besides ferdinand and her own father prospero so therefore she has no idea of how people living in other places look like so she swears by her modesty which is the jewel in her inheritance that she does not wish to have any companion in the world other than ferdinand so she says i do not know one of my sex so she does not know any other woman no woman's face remember she does not remember any other woman's face also save for my glass so she had not seen any other woman or any other face except that of her own face in the mirror nor have i seen more that i may call men than you good friend and my dearest father so she has seen no men other than ferdinand and her own father how features are abroad so she does not know how are the human shapes in the outside world she does not know how men look like in the outside world and she is completely ignorant of but her modesty that is the jewel in her inheritance dower here means inheritance and she says that by her modesty she swears that she does not wish to have any other companion in the world other than ferdinand nor could she imagine any other man besides ferdinand whom she would like and then 
when she says whom I would like that means what she is declaring her love so you see a lady declaring her love when she says I like she likes 49 and she does not want desire to like any other man in this world she begins to blush and that is the reason why she says but I prattle something too wildly so she puts a check on herself and she says that she is talking some rubbish and thus she is forgetting her father's instructions her father's precepts instructions yeah. then 49 i am in my condition a prince miranda i do think a king i would not so and would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly blow my mouth okay so here Ferdinand says that as far as his status is concerned he is a prince and he believes that he is a king because he feels that he is the only one who has survived the tempest so when he returns to Naples he is going to become the king of Naples although he has no wish to become a king so he says that he would no longer endure this labor of piling up logs than allow the flesh fly to pollute my mouth. Okay. So he is no longer going to endure. Okay. That is that uh, task of carrying the logs of wood if it were not for the sake of Miranda. This wooden slavery than to suffer. So she would have not he would not have succumbed to the uh, task of carrying those logs of wood instead he would have preferred to suffer but he is doing it only for the sake of miranda the flesh fly blow my mouth so may the flesh fly the blow fly deposit eggs pollute or contaminate his mouth okay. hear my soul speak so he now reveals his soul to Miranda. That means he wants Miranda to hear something which Ferdinand is going to speak from his heart. The very instant that I saw you, did my heart fly to your service. So Ferdinand also declares his love for Miranda. So he says the instant he saw Miranda, his heart flew towards her service. There his heart recites to make him a slave in her service it is for miranda's sake that he is satisfied he is content with carrying this log of woods and he patiently takes up the task of becoming a log man a carrier of logs of wood then miranda do you love me okay she asked 49 oh heaven O oh earth bear witness to this sound and crown what I profess with kind event. So here in these lines, 49 says that heaven and earth may bear witness to his love for Miranda. He says that if he speaks truly, they will reward his love. And if he speaks falsely, they would turn into evil all the best fortune that is promised to him. He frankly admits his love for Miranda and he says, I love you beyond all limit. Okay. So he loves Miranda beyond all limits. And he respects Miranda and honors Miranda beyond all limits in this world. Okay. Then Miranda, I am a fool to weep at what I am glad of. Miranda begins to weep. And she says that it is so foolish of her to shed tears at what? makes her happy she wanted the love of Ferdinand and now Ferdinand has declared his love to Miranda now Prospero in an aside he is happy to see his plan working he in fact wanted Miranda and Ferdinand to fall in love and here that love is materialized so Prospero says fair encounter of two most rare affections so it is a lovely meeting of two most rare loving hearts Heavens rain grace on that which breathes between them. So may God bless the love that grows between these two characters, that is Miranda and Ferdinand. So when Miranda was crying, there was tears. Now these tears are of joy. 
the 49 inquires of me wherefore you weep you now when Ferdinand inquires of Mirinda that why was she weeping though we know that it were the tears of joy it is then that Mirinda says at mine unworthiness that dare not offer what I desire to give and much less take what I shall die to want but this is trifling and all the more it seeks to hide itself the bigger bulk it shows now here Mirinda tells Ferdinand that she was weeping at her inability to give Ferdinand what she wishes to offer she wants to take something without which she would die but then she says that this is trifling trifling means this is idle talk and the more she tries to hide her love the more it is revealed the bigger bulk it shows and she says hence bashful cunning and prompt me plain and holy innocence so so she decides to put down the cunning display of bashfulness and allow her simple and sacred innocence to be her aid her help at that particular situation and she declares her desire before Ferdinand that she would like to get married with Ferdinand she says I am your wife if you will marry me so if Ferdinand is willing to marry Miranda then Miranda would become his wife and if Ferdinand rejects her proposal of marriage then Miranda assures him that she would die as a mate she would die as a maiden and if you refuse to marry she will become the servant of Ferdinand whether he wants it or not so she says that if Ferdinand is willing to marry her she would become his wife and if he rejects her proposal of marriage then she would die as a maiden or she would prefer herself to be a servant of Ferdinand whether Ferdinand allows her to be so or not however Ferdinand says my mistress dearest and I thus humble ever so he addresses Miranda as his dearest mistress and he tells that he is going to remain a servant for Miranda forever so he proposes his service to Miranda forever that means he will get married to Miranda and remain a servant to her for the rest of his life and then Miranda my husband then so she inquires that will you marry me or will you, uh, whether he would become her husband Ferdinand yes with a heart as willing as bondage ever of freedom so yes he says in affirmative and says that he would marry Miranda and he would marry wholeheartedly just like a slave who desires for freedom wholeheartedly and he offers his hand to Miranda and Miranda also offers her hand to Ferdinand and says and mine with my heart in it so this is again romantic notion she says I offer she offers her hand to Ferdinand with her heart in her hand and now she bids goodbye okay so farewell till half an hour ends so she bids goodbye to Ferdinand for the next half an hour so both of them uh, hold each other's hand and then Miranda bids him farewell for the next half an hour and that means that she would be meeting with Ferdinand after half an hour and Ferdinand also a thousand a thousand means he also uh, bids thousand farewells to Miranda and both of them Ferdinand and Miranda they exit separately in separate directions then Prospero who had been minutely watching all this he is satisfied he is pleased with what he had seen so he says so glad of this as they I cannot be so he is glad at the love affair of the two lovers that is Miranda and Ferdinand besides the love they have 
the thrill of surprise at the unexpected development, who are surprised with all. But my rejoicing at nothing can be more. So he says that beside the fact that they are in love, but they are also in the thrill of surprise at the unexpected development of their love. Still, Prospero says that nothing gives him more joy than the fact that these two lovers have fallen in love. So therefore, he decides to return to his books. I will to my book, for ye ere supper time must I perform much business appertaining. So he decides to return to his books of magic because before supper he has to much, do much work to complete his plan. So saying this, Prospero also exits. So this is all about Act 3, Scene 1 and other aspects of this particular scene I have already explained you in the live class. If any doubt, feel free to ask me. Thank you for watching and stay blessed.